so I'm okay. in the meeting. Yeah, I've got you added permanently. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to uh, call the order the Improvement and Services Committee of Wednesday, September 11th, 2019. Um, Alderman Burnett, Alderman Weary, Alderman Stoyer are present. Uh, Alderman Johnson and Alderman Nicholson, who are vice chair and chair respectively of the committee, are not present. They are excused. So is it okay if I, as a member of the committee, I make a chair motion of the committee? that you chair of this meeting? Motion. Do we need a motion? But, uh, well, we'll go. I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, just to be safe. No motion. I don't know. That's never come up before. Yeah, it hasn't. I it's, think it's fine. It's just it's procedural. Okay, so uh, I'll continue as chair, uh, temporary chair of the, <laughs> of the committee. Um, I, I understand we're going to have a revision to the agenda. Um, James, Jim, did you want to mention? Or Basically, what we want to do is we want to take items five and seven first and then resume with the remaining items in order. Okay, I get a motion to that effect. So moved. Motion made by Alderman. Second. Sawyer, second by Alderman. Weary to move items five and seven to the front of the agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, motion on the approval of the minutes. So moved. Second. Motion by Stoyer, second by Weary to approve the minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item five, consideration with possible action on request by Alderman Johnson of the authorization of the installation of crosswalk park at the intersection of Broadway and Hubbard. This was referred to the law department from our four, August 14th improvement and services committee. Uh, Jim or uh, Attorney Chavez? Uh, Yes, so the law department has looked into this, and there's basically there's two things that really govern this. The MUTC, which is the standard of that is required to be adopted by the federal government for the um, roads, uh, and then <coughs> from there, uh, it's the Manual on Uniform Traffic Control Devices. From there, the Federal Highway Administration has, uh, as the entity in, in charge of implementing the MUTCD has issued guidances on it. And so the question is really whether or not we are permitted to put anything in the sidewalk that is not um, white lines or um, they have limited things like brick patterns and stuff like that. So there have been two guidances that have been issued on this issue since 2011, um, when this was, or 2009 when this was adopted. The first one was in 2011 and it's so so the issue is coming up because there's there's language in MUTCD that says that things such as art should not be in the crosswalk and so because there's a little bit of ambiguity there people have been struggling with this issue across the US and so the highway administration felt it was prudent to issue a guidance to notify people what their position was in in the 2011 interpretation they stated that their position is that nothing should be in the, the, the um, crosswalk if they have the tendency to degrade, to degrade the visibility and the safety of it. So after that some issues were still coming up and so in 2013 they issued another one and said I don't think that our first one was clear enough let me be clear nothing is going to be in the in the crosswalks with the exception of the authorized items. So like we don't care what you frame it as let's make it clear know this, know that, none of this. Um, and so what it's really come down to is whether or not that administrative uh, agency's opinion or interpretation is controlling. And the answer is yes, it is. So because it is <coughs> not a legislative action, it is an administrative action. There's a difference between laws and regulations. Laws are proposed by Congress. Regulations are adopted by the agencies. Interpreting um, either, so if there's an ambiguity in the law or they say the um, entities should create regulations regarding it, they aren't going to codify all those. They'll just say, go establish those. That's what's in the Federal Register. When an entity, an agency, actually proposes those rules, those are considered, their interpretation of their own rules is considered controlling. So the fact that the Federal Highway Administration has come out and said nothing's allowed to crosswalk is controlling. So if we were to adopt any program which puts stuff in the, in the crosswalk, there is no doubt that we are in violation of the Federal Highway Administration's rule. The other question that has come up repeatedly is how <coughs> other communities are doing this, knowing that this is the position that the Federal Highway Administration has taken. I've reached out to, to 
So uh, we are a part of the International Municipal League. Uh, I'm sorry, International Municipal Lawyers Association. <coughs> and they have a uh, listserv that I, I'm part of. And that one is attorneys across the entire st uh, US who discuss the issues that are coming up on, on the national level. This has come up a couple times, and so the I reached out to a couple people. The person who's been handling this the most has been actually Adam Madison. And so what she indicated to me is that in her research, um, when people are adopting these programs, they're doing it against the advice of staff. Uh, if I could, the, the um, main reason why I asked this to be referred to the law department was the um, young lady, I forgot her name, but she had approached the committee a couple different times, and I, and I didn't want to have her be discouraged from bringing something forward. And I think our discussion at the committee level was, well, let's just get the opinion of the law department once and, once and for all, and, and we did that. And so I'm comfortable with, you know, not moving, not moving forward, but because I don't want to be in violation of what the federal government puts in place to protect people, pedestrians, and bicyclists, and whatnot. So any discussion from the committee? Well, the uh, story. I was in the audience for those two meetings, and uh, I, I forget her name as well, but from on Broadway, and gave a very good presentation, and I understand the dynamics of, you know, trying to have art and, you know, your city and all the feeling good about it, but when it comes down to a safety issue, and, you know, it was brought up by Director Grenier about the issues of safety and such, certain color pattern of brick and that, but these, this might have been a little bit louder, some of the designs, who knows. But, you know, part of me wants to say, hey, let's dress up our city in different ways. You can do it in different ways without going into the crosswalk. So I, I concur with Alder Burnett on this as well. No <coughs> Motion received in place on file. Second. Motion by Alderman Weary, second by Stoyer to receive in place in the file. All those in favor say aye. Reject. Aye. Huh? What's that? Do we have to reject? What do we do? Because the, the way it's written is no. considering we're in possible action, and if no. you just yeah, place it on file, it could be brought back up. So I think you'd want to. I think we're okay with the refusal to even place on file. It has the same effect as um, okay. as postponing indefinitely, which is essentially how you kill a motion. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, uh, Jim, for no offering no, that. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have the motion and the second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Item 7, consideration with possible action on request by Alderman Nicholson to address surface yeah. water drainage issues at 1661 to 1663 Elk Ray Lane. This was referred to the Law Department at our last INS meeting. Vanessa. So my understanding of the situation, and I just want to recap it so to make sure that my understanding of the, of the scenario is accurate with what the committee's understanding of the scenario is. There was a property that was purchased out of a receivership that had um, orders essentially to provide drainage which weren't disclosed to that person by the prior owner. And so the question that came to us was whether the city had any obligation to provide notice to subsequent purchasers of, of requirements that needed to be met um, in developing the property. So with that, uh, we've looked into this and essentially what it comes down is to whether or not the city has control of the property um, as to whether or not we have an obligation to provide uh, notice of anything. Um, all of the city's records are public. Um, I understand that the property owners did do a due diligence search, um, but for title purposes only, not for um, outstanding issues pertaining to the property outside of what would affect title. With that, um, the, the way it generally works is if there are issues that are not disclosed, that's something that's brought up against the, the person they purchased the property from, not against a municipal entity that holds those requirements. These are our safety standards that are imposed against the property. Um, and despite the fact that it may have taken more due diligence to find records that are public, um, then most people probably realize they need to engage and it doesn't change the fact that the city doesn't actually have an obligation to disclose it because there's no way we can keep track of all of the um, property transactions in the city. It would just be un unrealistic and unfeasible. 
And so instead, the way the, the law works is if you purchase a property and there's something that was material that wasn't disclosed to you, you have a case for material misrepresentation. I, I understand that since this was in a receivership, it's probably not going to go anywhere because those you're just going back to the receivership at that point and you take it essentially as is where it is. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that the city doesn't have an obligation to to find to to find people who are purchasing new properties and, and walk them through that process. Um, yeah, Vanessa, uh, um, you know, I sat in on that meeting as well and just listened to you know, the sides talk, and it sounds to me like, I mean, there should be responsibility somewhere along the way, and it seems like it, either the realtor or when, when the deed, you know, when you go to the county, isn't there some spot where if it's, things are not divulged, that somebody has to have that responsibility? So I know they're looking at the city, and I don't, I think in this case, the city even though it's a sad situation, it's a sad situation to me um, that this happened, but the fact is somebody further down the line should have taken the responsibility, whether it's the county tax lister. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure exactly where that point is where responsibility should be. The responsibility would have fallen on the original owner of the property, and it would have transferred, each obligation would have transferred. So, um, Let's say this was just two transactions back in receivership didn't exist. So the first owner was A, they transferred it to B, they didn't tell them about it. Then B transfers it to C, who's the current owner, and now they find out and they have to go put this in. They could come back against B, and then B would go back and say, and say you, you paid this material misrepresentation. The problem in this situation is that there's a receivership, and receiverships clear title and clear obligations. And so when you take a property from a property from an owner, um, under those circumstances, it's you don't have any recourse against them. It's as it is. Correct. Um, Vanessa, this might be like apples to orange comparison, but I think of often is prior to the wheel tax, the, the city special assessments, a lot of constituents I represent were surprised that when Hillcrest came up for reconstru or reconstruction that, oh my gosh, you know, this is a huge amount. Well, I think that responsibility is on the purchaser of the property to look into those things. Obviously as a city we'd love to inform everyone of every encumbrance or any restriction or any anything that's negative towards that property but it's just simply not realistic uh, in, in my opinion and so I kind of look at it that way. I mean but somewhere along the way it would have would have been nice had that property owner had been notified because then it could have saved had a lot of trouble at this point. Alderman Weary. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I know, Attorney, you had mentioned, you know, scenario A, B, and C, and I think this was that case, right? There was an original owner, then it went to another one, now it's in the current one. I think there were three. Right. Because of where, in this case, C was receivership at the bank. My understanding, the current owners bought it from the bank and receivership. But there was one before that. I think there was one or two before that, correct, yes. So I think one of the questions was, so there might be D then, really, we're on order D. If we ordered E to do something with it and they didn't, why didn't we enforce it? And then it went to B, a new owner, then we go back out there and say, hey, you got to put this drainage in. And then I went to C, we didn't go back out there and say, hey, you got to put this drainage in. And then finally it gets to D. Now we're going to input the drainage in when it should have been put in 15 years earlier, probably cheaper. I think, though, if you go back and you look at the details of the memo, the memo states at the time the property is developed. Okay. Because in, it, in its existing state, it did not cause water issues. It didn't block the water. But now That's once they built and developed, where they put the home now blocks the water flow. That's important. That was the, and that's the kicker. All right. Well, that is a good one. One second. Oh, that's what, are, you, are you done? Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, I got a question then. Um, right, because the county takes care of that with the receivership, right? They, they're the ones that work with the taxes and that. Um, but the city if put, it went the, into receivership for taxes, we don't, we don't know how it went into receivership. Okay. But I, I was wondering is there somewhere where it should be on the team? Is there somewhere that and say, you know, when something like the city says that this drainage has to be taken care of, 
that it has to go on the deed for when they, s they sell so that they don't like yeah because it happened that the person before didn't do it but then it went into this receivership and somebody else bought the property and now they're saying there's this problem with the drainage if so they had if it was on the deed itself so the obligation is not tied to the ownership of the property so it wouldn't be considered no. a restriction um there's nothing okay. that is prohibiting nothing of that nature there's no easements attached to it um, instead what it is is an obligation that's attached to development and so what really should have happened is when the person was decided to develop it that's when they should have done the record search okay. maybe that has to be out more with people that when they yeah, go with these properties because then they're not in this catch-22 I mean, so it, there's a huge risk anytime you buy a property, and I would love for all these things to be visible and all people have the knowledge of, but I, I don't know if it's possible uh, to have everyone aware of everything every time they purchase a property in the city. I think the onus is really on the homeowner, prospective homeowner, to really dig. And, you know, I think yeah, any, it, anything, any, emi any omission of any wrongdoing or think that there is anything wrong that what the city did I think no, it no. puts the city at a certain no, level of liability owner but then they went with the receivership so but they didn't do anything at all or let the people know or anybody know Father, I, I agree with Father Burnett too I, <coughs> I just work in the planning department and people I think sometimes spent more time uh, buying a pair of shoes than the, the checking on their land use or zoning or soil types I, I was guilty of that too because i didn't realize clay soils so what i'm saying is when you purchase a property uh you know there it would be nice to have a guide for people to look at and say check out this 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 and that but i think in this case you know like i said the, let the buyer be aware okay uh, is there anything when you do um like like you said where people know where to to look because I mean there's a lot of people it's the first time maybe and they don't they're not aware of all this stuff and there should be some kind of guide you know kind of telling them well this is things that you should be checking into I don't know I people, agree who's I, well, I, I agree we're getting a little off the subject we can discuss okay, that right. on a different right. agenda yeah. item but Alder Weir so one, one question if um, buyer would have just called the city and said hey is there anything on this property would we have been able to say well yeah there's something well I know when I worked up in the inspection department it was pretty common for uh, mainly on the commercial properties but we did also have people that would come up on buying residential properties and go through the paper files so and it was in there right? so yeah yeah it was, apparently this memo was in the paper files I get a motion <laughs> motion to receive a place on file. Second. Okay. A motion by Alderman Weary, Alder. Uh, second by Stoyer. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Vanessa. Appreciate it. <coughs> Item one, consideration of possible action on request by Alder Burnett to loose, on loosening the restrictions and requ requirements of paved driveways on residential lots to alleviate flooding issues. I put this agenda item out there kind of ironically the uh, the brother of the gentleman who was here on the issue we just discussed mentioned there's one way you can alleviate some of the flooding throughout the city is not having or allowing people to have gravel driveways and I did discuss this with director Gunier briefly he was of the opinion that it really wouldn't affect no the flooding much at all the way that you look at when you model the for flooding and things like that you look at areas and basically the areas are categorized by how well water will run off of them whether you do concrete asphalt or gravel is you consider all three of those materials as the same runoff coefficient because as gravel sits in place I mean if anybody has tried to regrade a gravel driveway after it's been pounded with traffic for five years you'll know that it's rock hard and so you look at that was the same runoff coefficient so in essence there would be no different no effect on flooding at all so now if you wanted to go after the flooding is 
there are options out there which are allowed, I think, by planning, is the uh, like permeable pavers, uh, things like that, where you put down like a block that has hollow cores, and then you fill that with like, I think it's pea gravel, and you plant grass in it. I mean, so there are alternatives out there for residents if they don't want to do the hard surface. And that is allowable under the current city? Under the current code, yes. I'm fine with personal I'm just curious, it's related. Um, I don't see them anymore, but growing up I used to see a lot of driveways where they would just have kind of the two tracks. Three trips, <laughs> yeah. Is that, was that like abandoned or not? Of course, or nobody does it anymore. Because then you'd have a strip of grass down the middle. I've been out of inspection, so I don't know if that's a lot. Right, I'm just curious. <laughs> Design. Uh, it used to be common, but. Yeah. Okay, yeah. can, can I get a motion? Motion to receive a place on file. Second. Motion by Alder Stoyer, second by Weary to receive a place on file. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, consideration of item two, consideration with possible action on request by Alder Burnett on amending the city's ordinance, landscaping, weeds, vegetation, and gardens on residential lots. The constituent who uh, requested this, I spoke with him over the weekend and he would like to hold it. So if I could get a motion to hold until the next meeting. Motion to hold until the Second. next meeting. Second. Okay, motion by Alder Weary. Second by Stoyer to, I guess, hold until our next meeting. Okay. Agenda item. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I oppose. Motion carries. Consideration with possible action on request by Alder Galvin that the Department of Public Works develop better systems to better and more quickly respond during disasters. I are seeing this in, in motion today. Uh, Has anybody um, heard from Alder Galvin to know what his intent is? Uh, because the issue we have with this is the <coughs> types of disasters that you're having, what is it? How bad is it? Where is it? I mean, um, I think the inkling initially, you know, I've talked to him on other matters and seems, you know, the flooding that happened along the East River. I think that was that was where he, I went down there and took a look at it too and he was down there as well. So that seemed to be the main thrust, I think. And at least if I can speak for him, that, that's yeah. what he was well, and I I think we had talked about that after that had happened at previous meetings where after that event the various entities that uh, are involved with the EOC had met to do a kind of like a post-mortem and see what went right, what did. Uh, since that time there's been a, a vast improvement in the communication between essentially fire, police, and DPW. Um, we came up with a different uh, reporting system where if staff is out in the field, they can snap a picture with their phone with this app that's available and then they can get that recorded and it gets into the system faster as a complaint. So I think there has been, you know, that was a good learning experience on uh, trying to come up with better ways to communicate. Um, because one of the other things I think that came up with that item was communication with the public. And I mean, just for example, today, uh, one of the things that we did is we put out a couple notices into the uh, media source that we use with the city to let residents know about, you know, the heavy rains were flooding, uh, some of the street issues that we're having and those types of things. So I think there's been a much better effort and uh, effect of, of getting the information out to the residents so that we can minimize the effects of the flooding. Other uh, favor? Um, yeah, I'm glad to hear this because I'll go way back to 1973. I lived on the bay before the dike and I'll tell you, back then they knew that this was coming and it was on the radio and the TV they were talking about it. They had contacts for you to contact with the city and they had um, they told you know where you can get your sandbags. Um, we went to build sandbags. Um, the National Guard helped. There was a lot that went on back then, and the city was really coordinated because, of course, they knew in advance that this you know was coming. And uh, sometimes the you know with the rains, you don't know how much you're going to get when you flood. Yeah. But they were well coordinated, and they really helped the residents out there a lot. So I was surprised when the other flooding happened at the East recently. 
um, that people said, well, they tried calling all these different numbers, and nobody could help this one lady. Nobody could help her. She didn't know where to go. She didn't know what was going on. So this is why I think Alderman Johnson, I mean, yeah. Galvin had what he wanted something. Without, uh, sure. without Alderman Galvin here, I don't know his intention. Perhaps he reached out to the chair, so I don't know if we have to discuss this too much. So if we could get a motion to either hold or refer before to. We, before we do that, though, I, I think, you know, maybe that's a communication that we'd have to put in. But, you know, but Jim, you, you were mentioning that the coordination's a lot better, et cetera. I think a lot of it is just information. So for the alders, I mean, I would look at it if you had some kind of a one page handout or something on file, something that you could send out saying, this is what's going on, this is the protocol, this is what's happening, and well, what we could we're do being is proactive. Is is there staff something? could maybe come up with a summary and, and take this motion tonight and just refer it to staff. And then I, what we could do is bring that report back at one of the, uh, you know, because now we're meeting twice a month, right. and then we could bring it back as a report. I, I'd, be, I'd be in favor of that. So get a motion. To make a motion to that effect to report. Uh, refer to staff. Refer to staff to report back at, I don't know, the next meeting, or do you want a no time limit? You don't need a time limit. Could be two weeks, a month? After, well, I would say probably two weeks, we'd be able to pull something. All right. Okay. Okay. Refer I'll to, uh, motion to refer to, I, uh, to staff to refer back to the INS committee in two weeks. Made by Stoyer. Yep. Second, second by Weary. I, I have a feeling, you know, this is kind of ironic, uh, Alderman Galvin with the flood might be help dealing with constituent issues right now. It just <laughs> occurred to me that might be why he's not here. Uh, so anyways, uh, mo I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I oppose. Motion carries. Item five, or actually item four, consideration with possible action on request of Alder Lefebvre that the gate at the east side yard waste site is left open during the winter. Alder Lefebvre. Uh, I believe uh, for that one, um, there, it's only open in the winter on the weekends. But residents say nobody closes it, it's open all the time. <coughs> and there's a big problem with the deer coming out. And actually, I think it's also not being closed properly during the summer months, too. Because I've gone by uh, 9.30 at night, gates open yet. So they had asked me to come and, you know, so what, what's going on? Why, why isn't the gate being closed? It's supposed to close at sunset during the spring, summer, fall, winter. It's supposed to be only open on the weekends, I believe. So they're right, they would like that gate closed when it should be closed? Sure. Here's Normally right. what they the were doing. I asked yeah. the staff for their opinion, Jim. You know, really, that's not one of the areas that uh, I'm charged with as far as responsibility. So I would say right now, I, I guess I'd recommend to refer to staff, and then that way we can come back. And uh, I think sure. and it's just my opinion that it's Closing it might be on our system. I don't know if we actually have staff to go close the gate or not, and that's something I'll have to check into. Because I, 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 I really don't know. First, I thought it was parks, but the parks says no. It was um, EPW that handles that, so that's why bringing it here. So yeah, yeah. so if yeah, we refer to staff, I can sure. find out, and then we sure. can sure. 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 what's going on. And and yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you for bringing that forward. Can I get a motion? Motion to refer to staff. Motion to refer to staff second. by Weary, second by Stoyer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Um, item six is consideration with possible action on request by Alder Johnson to bring an update on the progress from storm lift stations 110, 106, and to determine solutions to solve the flooding on Antoinette Street. And I, I can answer that. Um, I know that Alder Johnson was in last night to our office talking to Matt about this. I think he got the update then. But with lift station 110, uh, we're working on the plans and specs right now. Uh, you notice the contractors went out today, so we plan on bidding that on October 1st. We anticipate that that station should be up and running for next spring's flood season. So uh, that's the goal at this time. The one of the problems that you have with these stations is the equipment used for these stations is rather unique and it takes a long time to, to construct it. 
Uh, the pumps are actually coming from Sweden, and then the uh, part of the pumps, the discharge tube, <coughs> is coming from, it's fabricated down in Illinois. Typically, it's a 12 to 14 week delivery time. So, the pumps and the tubes are in Green Bay as we speak, I believe, and so this one is just going to be a matter of uh, uh, constructing the station and you know, getting the equipment in it. Uh, lift station, strong lift station 110 is going to be in, if you know where the slip is, where the ball diamond was going to go, this lift station is on the south half of that site. So this will take the basin that runs from there all the way out, basically <coughs> kind of sort of following Clinton up to Oneida. Uh, it's a fairly large basin of several hundred acres, I believe. And then the sister to this station is station 106. Um, this one will be at the intersection of Howard and Pearl. That one also is in design right now. Um, the pumps are essentially on order, but they, I mean, working through the shop drawings and those types of things, it hasn't been finalized yet. But that station also, we would, uh, our intent is to try to get that one out the door as quickly as possible as well. So. But that station will take care of the flooding that goes up Howard Street um, <coughs> all the way up to, I believe, up to Oakland. And it'll take, uh, like, the Seymour Park area. Um, and I'm not positive how far to the north it extends. So. So. But both those stations are in the works to get completed. Alder Weary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, Jim, so it sounds like for pump 110 we have everything and we're bidding it out. Yep. That was right. So 106, you said that, did we order the parts yet? The, no, the pumps are not ordered yet because we have to finalize the design to be able to finalize the actual dimensions and capacities of the pump. When will that be? I'd anticipate probably in a month or two. I mean, it'll be fairly quickly. <coughs> and then? 12 to 14 weeks to get them delivered. Yep. So, so, so the anticipation is to try to get that one up and running for spring as well. Okay. Right. Yeah. Motion. Motion by Second. Motion by Alder Weary, second by Alder Story to receive and place on file. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, thank you, Alder in favor. Uh, item okay. seven, uh, gen uh, I noticed a gentleman just walked in. Uh, sir, item seven was moved up to the beginning of the agenda. Were you here for the elk no. ray? Oh, no. You were here for elk ray, right? Yeah. 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 Well, so it was, it was uh, moved I'll, up. I'll explain all that. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so that item, uh, the city attorney was here at their last INS meeting. We referred it to the city attorney's yeah. office. And she was here. We did not have a member of the public present, so we moved it up to the beginning of the agenda with another oh. agenda item. So the motion that we made and approved was to receive and place on file. Now well, that basically is no action one way or the other. It's just to receive and place on file. It will go to the full city council for action of that that full body next Tuesday at six o'clock. Okay. So it, I, I would entertain, if you wanted to address this committee, I'd be happy to. Yeah, I would actually, I'd like to give a couple okay. words. If that's, oh. Can I'll I get a, a motion, motion to reconsider? I'll make a motion I'll second to it. reconsider. Okay, we get a motion to reconsider item seven to allow for public comment by uh, Stoyer, second by Weary. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Can I get a motion to open the floor to your motion? Open the floor. Second. Uh, motion made by Stoyer, second by Weary. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. Sir, uh, just uh, come on up, identify your name and address for the for the record, and uh, address the committee. By the um, way, I'm, I'm uh, the chair and vice chair, and I'm here. That's why I'm yeah, meeting. Yeah, okay, You're like, <laughs> cool. Uh, Jeremy Kroll, address 2744 Glendale Avenue, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Call number two? No, it's not. Okay. Um, what I would like to address is, since this has all been going on, and today actually just took the cake for me because it's since it's been going on you know it's been taking months and months and months and months so I went to get occupancy for my place they said they're not giving me occupancy until this is worked out Alderman Nicholson called 
took care of it. They said they're going to give me occupancy. However, I feel that they had no, they, they're not going to give me occupancy. Now this has been dragging out for another two, three weeks where the inspectors come, they inspected the whole property, said it's fine. Electrical inspector came, gave me a list of everything <coughs> to do, did everything on the list. Now he's like, comes back, oh, by the way, you got to do this to get occupancy. Okay, fine. Do all that. Schedule another inspection, comes back. Oh, by the way, you got to do this. By the way, you got to do this. And it's, it's, now it's coming into a, were, were they really going to give me occupancy till this is resolved or not? And that's where I'm at right now. I mean, today, he, everything was done, finalized. I mean, I have to put a step in the back because I can't get concrete in because of the water problem back there. Okay? Build a step. It's just rough grade. The step was a half an inch in one spot. A half an inch. Too low, so they said. I took a tape measure, went back there. I should have video recorded it. A half an inch. Deny me occupancy for a half an inch on a step that's not even going to be used. It's a mud pile back there. You can't get back there. There's too much water. Okay? So now today with the, you know, well, you got to have this done, that done. It's all done. No, sorry. Can't do it. Schedule another inspection down the road. Do you have a list of all the things that... Do you have a list of those things? I have no list of nothing. They keep making it up every time they come there. I haven't gotten a list. I don't even get a phone call. I don't get nothing. I got a text message today, this afternoon, finally, for the final final. He said, because it's a duplex, I need smoke detectors, plugs and switches on the other side. Had my electrical guys go there, do it all, comes in. No, now you have to finish the whole project. It's not even the same building. So this is city inspection? Yes. Okay. And I don't know because this is happening, like they're like, you know, it took me a while to get that off to even get them to give me an occupancy, but it's like, were they really going to or not? I mean, it's very frustrating. I own the other two lots next to it, which I plan on building on, but it's like, for what? To go through all this again? It's like, what's next? You know, you open this up and you don't even know what's, you know, oh, we found a memo from 2006 that says you have to pay 10 grand to, to get this figured out or whatever. Really? Yeah. Sir, I, I, I don't. Any other questions from the committee? <coughs> I mean, um, I don't know what to do I, at this have, point. Yeah, I, I do have one. Thank you, Jeremy, for coming. When you bought the lot, did you call the city at all and ask, hey, is there anything that needs to be done with this lot? No, I didn't call them because. The title company, I reached out to everybody. Yeah. This property has changed hands numerous times. Did you know that? It has never been brought up. Nothing was ever written. Nothing. Did you know the improvements that were to be done on that lot nope. were only when development was going to be done? So yep. previous people didn't have to do it because they didn't develop it. So nope. But when the project went through, they were developing <coughs> it. So if the city's going to require somebody to do that, when the guy started the project on the first one, he should have been required to put that in right away. No, what do you mean the first one? Well, because he must have owned, I'm assuming he owned all those lots in a row. I don't know. I'm just guessing kind of on what happened. So I'm guessing he had this thing laid out and was like, oh, but if, he's, <coughs> if they're like, well, we're going to require you to do this, okay, when they sold him the property, I don't know. But there's no record of it anywhere as far as the title companies. I've called everywhere, turned up every stone, and there's nothing but a memo, this memo, allegedly. No, you're referring to he. Is that the previous person who owned it, or is that um, back? It may have been back, back. I'm not even sure. I don't know who owned it, when, or or what. So on the do what? On the do I just, one second. Second. Okay. go ahead. Okay, I'll I'll start, start, uh, I'll start. Start. I was just going to ask when, when, Jeremy, when did you purchase this property? Um, 2018. Okay. So, like all the worries said, you know, he was wondering if you had checked with the city. Are there, was there anything? I didn't check with the city, no. All I was told from them, from who? The <laughs> city, when I got the permit, was you have to run sewer and water in the front of the house. They never said you have to run a whole private sewer in the back. I mean, once you said that when I came and got the original permit, 
I put 18,000 to run the, the sewer and water in the front of the house. Okay. Oh, that's there now. That's there. That's there. In. Done. Now I'm going to get occupancy and all of a sudden this memo comes up from 2006 saying, hey, you got to do this. It's like, well, all these permits went through, all these inspections have been going through, and not a word is said. Not one word. So when did you start building the pro uh, your project? Um, in 2018. <coughs> so you went over how long before, how long did you work on this before you found out that all this? It was, well, I got the plans approved from the city, all the heights, all the, you know, you got to go through a, a huge process in Green Bay to get a building permit. All the heights, the elevations, everything has to be figured out. The pitches of the thing, the the environmental stuff, where all the dirt's, it all has to be drawn out on a map, where the dirt's going to be put, everything, fencing, everything. So you had a prof professional site plan? Program. Yes. Okay. My own associates did it all for me. Okay. You know, and that cost me, if, you know, thousands of dollars to do that. Because we wanted it to be perfect, because we know the city of Green Bay is a little more difficult, you know, working with, from what I hear. And we wanted it to be perfect. We didn't want it there to be any, you know, hey, you guys did this wrong or that wrong. We had it done by the book and perfectly. That's all I have right now. Okay. Any questions? Yep. Okay. Um, any other comments? Nope. I think that's it. Can I make a mo uh, count, accept a motion to close four? Motion to close four. Second. Motion to close the four, uh, made by Stoyer, second by Weary. All those in favor? Aye, aye. aye. aye opposed. So, uh, we're not, this doesn't come up that often, Jeremy, but so having decided an issue, having a member of the public who the issue relates to. So the, the motion we made would, was to receive and place on file. The city attorney yep. offered some information uh, to us. I don't want to speak for her. Um, I don't want to you know paraphrase what she said exactly yep. for this the, at risk of getting it wrong. Right, so right. this meeting is recorded. This is a public meeting. Yep. So what I would recommend you do is uh, back. To, to continue reaching out to city staff. Alderman Nicholson, as you know, is well aware of the situation. Perhaps watch the recording of this meeting so you understand what the city attorney said. And then uh, if Alderman Nicholson doesn't pull this item for consideration at the council meeting, I'd be happy to do so. So you can okay. address the city council. City Thank council you. decides Right. Provide authority on the on the situation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That now, since we reconsidered it, there really is no action, so we have to retake it. And under that, I have some questions. For sure. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Um, there was a mention of a, the previous developer <coughs> doing work in the area. Should we have required them to put this in as they were doing that work? But they didn't develop these. The lot in question. I think what they did is. I think what he's referring to is I think some the guy that had this first might have put in the street, the utilities pavement, and then broke this out into the lots. I think this how this whole neighborhood started, I believe. I don't know the whole history of how because there's like five lots left. Or yeah, something like that. Six and I lots. thought originally it was the city of Green Bay that owned it originally. And that I don't. So what I said was, if you owned it originally, and you put the storm sewer in on Deborah, and you knew you didn't put it down deep enough in case you ran that through, then you should have known that right away, right off the bat. Yeah, and Jeremy, I don't, it's a very important issue, so I don't want to yeah, cut yep. you off. It's just the, the protocol, I guess, is from staff and the council. So the oh, floor is, I, I'd be willing to open the floor again if you want to make some more comments, but we have yep. to. Exactly. Thank you. So it's a storm sewer that was required? In yes. The okay. yes. And how would that not have been caught when all the building plans were approved? That I don't know. It's uh, That's one thing I wanted to clarify is the building permits and, and the reviews that he's talking about are all done in the inspection department, not DPW. Um, the one thing that DPW might look at, and with this being a one and two family home, is the most we might see would be the site plan, and so, um, you know, with his, some of his concerns, I can't answer it because DPW does not have a lot of participation. So, Alder, uh, story. Thank, thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I, I was at the <coughs> meeting, last meeting, or when you were here speaking on this, and I, 
you know, I th it could be he said, she said kind of stuff, but I, I would, you know, from the time you had that memo and to, you know, the history of this particular property, it would, I think we, we need to go back and, and take a look at what the history was. In 2006, this happened. 2009, this happened. You know, blah, blah, blah. I, there's got to be a record of that. So whether it's DPW or inspection, I think it's important that at least we have that. And I don't, I don't know how the committee feels about that, but it's hard for us to make decisions on things that, well, we're not sure if they said it or you said it. You know, I just, I would like to see something, some, some concrete information stating that this was the time frame that all these things happened, or. So I don't know what, what the protocol is on that. Are we I do have a question for Mr. Kroll. So yeah, go ahead. Make a motion up on the floor. Motion up on the floor. A uh, motion made by Weary, second by no second. Stoyer to open the floor to hear from interested parties. All those favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. The floor is open. Thank you. Um, I was wondering, Mr. Kroll, uh, when did you initially plan to have these up and open and have tenants? Already. The problem is, is <coughs> it took them six weeks to give me my permit. But by already, do you mean you know, January 1st or do you mean Like I, I wanted them at least by June 1st, okay. July 1st at the latest. And did you have people lined up already? Or were yep, I do now. I have people lined up to move in there and it's this has been going a two week process of getting a occupancy permit for like ticky tacky stuff. Would you Which I understand it has to be done. You would know. you have had them back in July? Yes. Those tenants? Yes. Okay. For both sides? Is it a duplex? Well, just the one side. Okay. The other side I was planning on moving into. Okay. So, but I said I was going to check the market and see how it was because I've had a lot of action over there of people wanting to move in. So I was thinking maybe <coughs> I wouldn't move in and then start developing the next two. So how much will it cost to run your utility line that storm goes? It's like eighty seven hundred dollars. If you don't mind asking, how much are you charging for rent? Uh fifteen hundred. Thirteen fifty to fifteen I got thirteen fifty on the first side, but now I had a lot of interest, so I'm thinking about jacking it up to fifteen. And the way I kinda look at it is okay, there's it's building, I mean, it's gonna be generating four to five thousand dollars in taxes per year. You know, if I have one, two, three, I mean, that's 12 grand worth of taxes for $8,500. I mean, we're fighting or arguing over $8,500. Who's going to pay for it? I mean, if it was me, I'd be like, hey, let's run this thing and let's get this guy up and moving. But it seems like they're, you know, trying to kick me at every every turn. It's insane. That's all I had right now. Yeah. Uh, any other? No, I appreciate the comments. Yeah. I, I, I don't have anything right now. Okay, a uh, motion to close the floor. The floor. Or second. Second by, uh, made by Weary, second by Stoyer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So, uh, <coughs> continue discussion or yeah. motion? Uh, uh, Weary? I think at some point here we do need better communication between the departments so that when somebody comes in to build something, they know exactly what's needed because they have timelines and they have the income they're expecting and counting on. And I think the delays here are on our end. You know, I'm not even going back that far. I'm just going, when you came in to get your building permit, you're not told about this. Uh, you know, we already lost two months of rental income, right. three grand. So this has to be a way, you know, I, I know it's not completely done yet, but. Yeah, this other so layer now is <laughs> who should the city, you know, provide some of the work or the funding to get the work done so this yeah. gentleman could lease his property and so I think that that's a discussion that you know, would be helpful to have the city attorney and director in here not that you know Jim is not capable of that discussion but yeah. it's almost like uh, I don't know what this committee could, could do at this point. Well, I mean, there's the number of threads here. So. That, Jim that figure really would be more work that he has to pay <coughs> for to have done it's not permitting fees or anything right? to run that, that storm line? No, I, well, I think it's what he's referring to is he probably got an estimate mm -hmm. on what the present plan is for that additional, is there what we would call private storm What's our fee for that? We would sure we have a fee for I don't know if we would have a fee for that or not. Okay. 
So we cannot move forward without that lateral, so to speak? Is that what it is? In the back. Well, like I said, I'm still, I still would like to see the history. Oh, but it's, the note that I made on your story is, is that uh, I'll make sure that Steve has a copy of a summary from the timeline for council when this, because I'm sure Andy will pull this well, for discussion, so. We need to see that. I yeah. really do think yeah. we need to see that. Um, as far as proceeding, I'm not. It would be nice if we had a motion to, you know, to bring the council or then um, proceed in place on fire. I'm going to have a motion to reimburse uh, up to three thousand dollars worth of the installation cost. Oh. So well, I'm, it sounds I'm like thinking that, that it, the way it is right now, I think that it would be best just to have whole council discuss it because without Vanessa here, no. Well, that's going to be my motion though. And if it yeah, gets I think over an affirmative, I mean, we can motion. motion. No, you know, an affirmative motion, like an action item, yeah. that the council can say that's right. that we can take this away. is a recommendation yeah. to the committee other than a yeah. receiving. Place I'm basing that. this off of the fact that. We should have known this when we gave out the permits. Lost of income, it's clearly our fault. And then, you know, it sounds like two months, might be more. Hopefully, we can get this up and running and not being toyed with by inspections. I hope. I hope not. I hope so. I hope <laughs> maybe it's I, maybe it's oversights on your part. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So, well, could be either one. Yes. Yeah, uh, so my motion is to uh, reimburse up to three thousand dollars of the expense of putting in this uh, the storm sewer. Okay. Motion. I put maybe because if it's the last, we don't want to. Give yeah. Alder well, McWary. You pick the I guess second, we can I'll, have a discussion. I'll, I'll second for second discussion. Second by Alderman uh, Stoyer, any discussion? This is going to go to council. Well, it's, it's going to be asked over. I just want to get okay. something. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll talk about it. All those we'll in favor? Then. Say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So this goes to the City Council on Tuesday. And and we'll at 6 o'clock, we'll pull the item, be in contact with Alderman uh, Nicholson. Okay. Right. I'll Thank talk you. to him as well. So Thank you. I okay. appreciate yeah. you. Start. Thank All you. Right. All right. All right, uh, item eight, consideration with possible action on request by Alder Nicholson to address payment ponding issues at 2405 Hampton Avenue, referred to staff from the August 14th meeting. Uh, anything on this, Jim? Yeah, we, staff went back and, and looked at the scenario of what's going on in Hampton there. What we found <coughs> is on this particular block of Hanson, uh, or Hampton, excuse me, where this lady lives, is her side of the street for that whole block does not have an inlet in the area, so water is expected to flow from mid-block around to the two intersecting streets. And <coughs> Hampton is very, very flat to begin with, so after looking at it is, as a staff, we thought, well, Instead of putting in material into the flow line of the gutter or something and moving the water over to our neighbor's house is, I came up with the idea, why don't we just put an inlet in there and get the water off the street to begin with? Then we don't have to worry about it. So that's what we're looking at doing. Um, we've got an estimate from a contractor that does a lot of our emergency repairs already. We're just trying to coordinate the installation. So that inlet will go in in front of this lady's home probably in the next month or so. So is there any cost correct the, uh, yeah, yeah, correct yeah. the uh, issues that she has with water in her driveway, apron, and by the mailbox. Is there any cost to the homeowner? No. Okay, okay, that's good, thank you. Right. Any questions? Awesome, Jeff. Yeah, very yeah, much thank so. You. Thank so you. What, what would be a proper motion? So I'll receive a place of file. I'll receive a motion. Staff. Motion by Alder Stoyer, second by Weary to receive a place of file. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Aye opposed. Motion carries. Item 9, consideration with possible action on request by Alder Nich Nicholson to address chronic flooding. Seems to be a lot of those issues. <laughs> in the Schwartz Street, Edison Street area, referred to staff from our last meeting. Jim? Okay, this one is a little interrelated with dealing with the flooding on Main and Mason, um, <coughs> of which we found today that uh, you know, obviously you guys are aware that we have a consultant looking at this and trying to come up with possible solutions that would be viable and uh, cost conscious basically and uh, Matt and I received an email this afternoon where it looks like we may have something that's very promising which would alleviate uh, the flooding at Main and Mason and part of alleviating that will 
the side effect of that is it goes back over into this neighborhood as well. Um, one of the other things that we found is uh, city staff had gone out in this neighborhood over the last week and started uh, televising the storm sewer and we did find some deficiencies as well that we were going to take care of which should help alleviate some of the flooding here. And again, uh, seeing as this is one of the known areas, what we do when we plan for future projects in this area is uh, we also look at taking care of stormwater issues that uh, would be there. So, so that's how we're handling this one. Okay. Any uh, questions from the committee? Okay. Um, can, I, can I receive a motion? Motion receive a place on file. Motion by I'll Weary, second, second by Stoyer to receive a place on file. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I oppose. Motion carries. Item 10, reporting of actions taken de by Department of Public Works, a granting license tree and brush trimmer to Epic Innovations, LLC. Uh, this uh, contractor or licensee has had a license in 2018. We haven't had any complaints, and so we issued the license. Okay. Motion received and put some file. Second. Okay, motion made by Stoyer, second by Weary to receive and place on file. All those in favor? Aye. Say aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Informational item one, director's report on recent yeah, activities. No director report tonight. No director oh. no report. <laughs> Very well. Okay. Motion uh, to receive and place on file. Motion to receive and place on file. No report. There's no report. Stoyer, second by Weary. All those in favor? Say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Item two, obviously meetings are fluid depending on the discretion of the chair and Public works, uh, no public hearings. I have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. By Stoyer, second by Alderman Weary. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you. Coming up right. I'm older now. <laughs>